Human beings are naturally driven to flirt with those to whom we're attracted, whether we realize it or not. Trying to get a stranger to notice your interest in them can be a difficult thing to accomplish, though. But there are scientifically proven ways to get someone to take notice. Psychologist Monica Moore has spent a lot of time studying the way women flirt, and it's more covert than you might imagine. Women in public settings send nonverbal cues to those that they're interested in. Sometimes they're so subtle, the other person might assume they're the one making the first move, when in reality, they've just been summoned. In flirting situations, the key is making them check you out without letting them know that you know that they're checking you out. The more cues that are thrown out, the better the chances of scoring a mutual flirtation. Moore notes there are 52 behaviors that women use to get noticed, including glancing, primping, and licking their lips. Often the more shy and subtle behaviors women engage in are coupled with more overt shows of interest, like flirting with several people at once until one of them shows the same level of interest. Once the right nonverbal cues have been sent out and it's time to actually introduce yourself, you're going to have to take into consideration which direction you're physically coming from. A 1975 psychological study notes that while men dislike being approached from the front, women have a problem with being approached from the side. Clark, why don't you go away? The preference stems from what psychologist Martin Graff calls, quote, invasion of personal space. So if you're trying to approach a man, make sure you come from the side. And if you're interested in a woman, it's better to introduce yourself by approaching her head-on. It's also important to present yourself in an approachable way, according to Graf. A smile and a flash of your eyebrows can greatly improve your chances. Subtle nonverbal cues are one thing, but once you've actually reached the point of engaging in conversation with another person, subtlety should be thrown out the window. A 2009 study tested which opening lines were most effective for both men and women and found that the more direct an opening line was in indicating interest, the more successful it tended to be. Let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. Okay. Let's get out of here. Absolutely. Let's get out of here. Okay. Let's get out of here. Okay. The reason behind it has to do with changing gender roles. Specifically, changes in societal norms have affected the way women approach dating. Not only are women more likely now than ever to be the flirtation initiators, but they're also more likely to reciprocate interest in someone if that someone is upfront with them about it. There's my number. So maybe we can go out for coffee sometime. While being direct about your interest in another person is definitely a good place to start, figuring out exactly what your opening line should be is a little more complicated. One psychological study presented groups of men and women with three types of opening lines, so-called cute flippant, innocuous, and direct. All three are pretty easy to spot. Describing lines as cute flippant is a nice way of referring to those awful pickup lines like, Wow, well, Hannah, you're really wearing that dress like you're doing it a favor. Oh. Innocuous lines are the more harmless, open-ended types of questions like, all right, <clears throat> you're obviously military, what branch? And the direct approach is exactly that, something like, Amy, can I buy you a drink? Uh-huh. The results of the study indicated that neither men nor women have much interest in cheesy one-liners. But where men prefer the direct approach, women tend to actually prefer the innocuous one, which the researchers attribute to sex role socialization. As the study puts it, the tradition of men approaching women also suggests that women will choose opening lines for meeting men that are innocuous and non-threatening. We've been led to believe that having a so-called wingman or wingwoman along on a social outing will increase our chances of landing a date. But as much as we'd like to believe that having the support of our best friend as we navigate the murky waters of flirtation is the best course of action, sometimes it just isn't. During a university lecture, author Jeffrey Hall said that bringing in a wingman or woman doesn't make flirting any easier to identify. The reason? People are terrible at knowing when they're being flirted with. Hall conducted two separate studies on flirting, which found that while, most of the time, people can tell if someone isn't flirting with them, it's incredibly rare to recognize when they are. Are you attracted to me? What? Are you attracted to me? You give me indications that you are. Having a great smile can do wonders for your chances of scoring a date. A 2013 study found that the perception of someone's overall attractiveness was heavily influenced by their smile and could even go so far as to make up for being relatively unattractive. But it isn't enough to just look happy. There are actually two kinds of smiles, the fake, forced type, and the genuine one, also known as the Duchenne smile. Named after a 19th century French physician who studied facial expressions, the Duchenne smile involves using both voluntary and involuntary muscle contraction. It's the smile that creates crow's feet around your eyes. In one study, researchers from UC Berkeley analyzed the smiles of 141 college yearbook photos and found that those who displayed genuine smiles were actually happier in life and marriage up to 30 years later. So presenting genuine happiness can actually lead to relationship fulfillment. Eye contact can tell you a lot about how interested someone might be in you. 
While maintained eye contact might generally mean that your flirting tactics are a success, according to a psychological study from 1997, there's more to it than that. The study, which videotaped 10-minute-long interactions between men and women, found that a woman's behavior within the first minute, both positive and negative, had little to do with her actual interest in a man. It was only after the fourth minute that her behavior reflected her real interest. In another study, strangers were told to hold unbroken direct eye contact with one another for two minutes. The result was that the participants reported feelings of, quote, passionate love for each other at the end of it. So you can actually make someone fall in love with you via eye contact. Just try not to be creepy about it. If you can make someone fall in love with you after two minutes of unbroken eye contact, then the idea that you could persuade someone to agree to a date just by touching them doesn't seem that far-fetched. In 2004, Dr. Nicola Guigen conducted three separate experiments related to touch in a courtship context. A young man asked female strangers to either dance or to give him their phone number. He wound up being more successful when he made brief physical contact with the woman during his request. Of course, it's important to keep in mind cultural norms. Guigen indicates in his findings that in more non-contact cultures, touching a woman in a courtship situation probably wouldn't work out so well. Ew! Get off of me! Ugh, as if! According to psychology professor Pamela Regan, men tend to be more successful at flirting when they engage in what are known as, quote, space maximization movements. Things like stretching, moving around a single location, or resting their arm on the chair next to them tend to be more noticed by surrounding women. Psychologist Rochelle M. Smith reiterates the idea, although she notes that space maximization movements are also related to the need to dominate other males. She says, interestingly, these same behaviors are used when trying to intimidate and express dominance over other males, as well as to demonstrate interest and availability to a woman, likely complementary goals. Perhaps the behaviors that women find attractive in men are tied to long-standing gender roles. The one who can show the greatest strength among a sea of available men is the one who'll have the most success at least when it comes to the first meeting. We've already established how nonverbal cues work to show interest in another person, but it doesn't end at eye contact and hand gestures. What you're wearing can have a significant effect on how attractive others perceive you to be. According to psychologists, the color red is often associated with status, power, and virility. Hey. Hey. Wow, you look great. Yeah. And according to one psychological study, the color red works for both men and women. Both were shown photos of men and women in front of either a red or white background. Those on the red background were deemed to be more physically attractive than those on the white one. So if you're hoping to send out sexual vibes, red is definitely the color to wear. Going out for drinks at a bar and buying one for someone you're interested in is rarely ever a bad idea, but you might actually have better luck getting a phone number or a second date if you head to a place like a coffee shop. The reason is that the temperature of a drink that someone is holding can directly affect how they perceive the people around them. Sounds crazy, but it's true. In 2008, a study was conducted in which a group of college students were asked to hold on to either a hot cup of coffee or a cold cup of coffee prior to rating another person's personality. The study found that those who had held the hot coffee believed the other person to be more generous and caring than those who had held the cold coffee. What it comes down to is this. If you buy someone something warm, you'll seem pretty warm yourself. Angel. You've got wings, baby. If you're looking to make a genuine, lasting connection with another person, small talk is the wrong way to go. According to a 1997 study, people who engage in a more intimate line of questioning with one another tend to feel closer. Alice, tell me something true. Two groups of people were separated into pairs and then talked to each other for 45 minutes. While half of the couple spent the time engaging in small talk, the other half were given a list of increasingly personal questions. By the end, those who had asked the deeper questions felt more connected to their partner than those who hadn't. What's more interesting about the study, though, is that six months after it ended, two of its participants had actually fallen in love. Jeffrey Hall has done a lot of research on flirting. He and a fellow researcher conducted a study examining both verbal and nonverbal flirting styles, which involved 51 pairs of opposite-sex heterosexual strangers. The strangers were asked to interact with each other for 10 to 12 minutes. And by the end of the study, the couples had engaged in a total of 36 different flirting behaviors. Checking out how another person's body is positioned toward yours is an easy way to figure out if they're interested. According to Hall's study, examples of flirtatious body language also include playing with one's hair, any sort of self-touching, like putting a hand on your face or over your mouth, and crossing or uncrossing legs. And anything you can do to draw attention to your mouth is good. Other obvious ones to look out for? Moving closer to one another or exposing one's chest. Everyone appreciates a good sense of humor, but as it turns out, a woman's laughter has deeper significance than just the telling of a good joke. In one 1990 study, it was discovered that when in mixed company, women tend to laugh more frequently than men do. 
The reason has to do with ingrained social dominance. According to the study, male sexual behavior is rooted in dominance, whereas female sexual behavior is often submissive. The study states, Thus females, when they are together with males, should show the higher degree of ritualization and laughter than males, because showing submissiveness is equal to solicitation when the male has a tendency to dominate the female. The study also took into account same-sex couples, where laughter is more pronounced in male-to-male -male pairings because of the same sort of dominance. It concluded that women use laughter, particularly with men, to show their interest via social submission. So a good sense of humor really is that important, at least if you want to flirt successfully. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more list videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.